Ilya Mikheyev. The Toronto Maple Leafs have re-signed Ilya Mikheyev to a two-year contract extension. What's his cap hit? Oh, that's an extremely important question. It is 1.65. No, it's not! Can I give a big shout out to Kyle Dubas for refusing to let another player have their jersey number in their contract number? Was that the holdup? Because you get Matthews, who wears 34, making 11.634. Mitch Marner, who was making 10.9? No, he was making 10.8. 9-3 for 93, which is what he wore in junior and couldn't wear with the Leafs because it's retired. And Ilya Mikheyev comes in, I want 1.65, and Dubas' eye just starts twitching. Sorry, Ilya, best I can do is 1.645. Ah, uh, imagine what kind of a nerd you have to be to find that funny. Well, I do. This might explain Mikheyev's cap hit a little bit more than my theory. According to his agent, Dan Milstein, Ilya decided to step off a little bit from an already agreed upon number to help the team fit under the cap. For Ilya, it was less about the money, but more about the role in the organization. He wishes to win the Stanley Cup. It's been a lifelong dream. This is from a Luke Fox article on sportsnet.ca you gotta check out. Speaking of Dan Milstein, what even is this picture, dude? This is what he tweeted out when McKayev signed. I love it. But I gotta say, this is a real nice contract. And more than anything, I'm so happy the two sides avoided arbitration. Because salary arbitration is this ugly process that no players or teams like going through. The player is forced to ask for the sun and the moon because then when arbitration hits, the very team that they play for argues for why they're not even that good. And with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Ilya Mikheyev, I just don't see two sides that were willing to do that to each other. Because what has Ilya Mikheyev done for the Toronto Maple Leafs besides everything that's been asked of him? He came to North America, worked extremely hard, learned the North American game on the fly, played all over the lineup, was playing with John Tavares for a while, was killing penalties, was even scoring. Stuff was out of control when Ilya Mikheyev was signed. People forget because 2020 is been the longest decade of our lives. Things were out of control. Like, remember there were rumors that Ilya Mikheyev, before even playing an NHL game, was going to play with Austin Matthews? Do you remember the photo of Mike Babcock taking Ilya Mikheyev to an expensive breakfast at what I believe was Expectations, just outside the practice facility? Listen, I've eaten there, but it's not where I would take the new Russian hotshot prospect like, Ilya, everything the light touches is your kingdom. You ever try Canadian bacon there? Where was it? Before? Oh yeah, he even scored! With 8 goals and 23 points in in 39 games, Ilya Mikheyev scored at a 17-goal, 48-point pace as a rookie in the NHL. Maybe not your typical rookie, he was 25, he just turned 26, but still really impressive. But the problem with Ilya Mikheyev is he only played 39 games because he had a gruesome injury where he got his wrist slashed and it took him months and months to recover. Then you have the Leafs side of things, where their main strength in the negotiation, as far as I can tell, is that he's only played 39 games, and really you're going to hold that against him? Like it's his fault? And they know it's not his fault, and they know how hard they work because Kyle Dubas spent days in the hospital with Ilya McKay while he was recovering. He was practicing in Toronto, recovering in Toronto, getting better at his craft in Toronto. Ilya Mikheyev, frankly, is what this team needs. Because yeah, this offseason the Leafs added a lot of things that they lack. They got big meanies like Zach Bogosian and Wayne Simmons who will punch your head off. They get Joe Thornton. They acquired a lot of beards, a lot of experience and leadership. Ilya Mikheyev absolutely showed leadership by how hard he worked to recover from that injury. How good he looked. He was a world destroyer heading into the bubble. In fact, he scored the first goal of the bubble 30 seconds into the bubble with a pass from John Tavares, if I remember correct. But maybe where things fell apart is uh, expectations were way too high because it was Superman, Supermania, soup, soup. That's we he likes soup is basically what we know about him. Maybe we expected too much out of a guy who at his best scored at less than a 50 goal pace on a team that has John Tavares, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and William Nylander. Here is what Ilya Mikheyev is based on what we know about him, what we've seen from him. He's so fast. He's relentless. He's He's a great penalty killer, and he barely ever took penalties himself, barely ever put the team on the penalty kill. He had four penalty minutes in 39 games. The guy took two minors all season. And just in case you thought that was a blip, his final two seasons in Russia, he had eight penalty minutes and six penalty minutes, and that was in 62 and 54 games. The guy doesn't take penalties. So you get a guy who is really fast, he's a penalty killer, he can play in your middle six, he's gonna get a goal total somewhere in the teens, he's gonna get a point total somewhere between 40 and 50. Did I just describe Kasperi Kapanen? No, I didn't. I described Ilya Mikheyev, who, for the next two seasons, makes half as much. Wouldn't it be better to have both? It would be, but there's a salary cap, so too bad. I gotta say, 1.645... 
I wouldn't have minded that on a one-year deal. It might have been a little rich considering he hadn't played that much, but like it's 1.645. You get over it. To have this cap hit for two years on a team that could use some cheaper deals, it's pretty good. So what happens next? Because Steve, I don't know if you've noticed, but the Leafs are over the salary cap and they still have Travis Dermott to sign. Here's what I would say. Don't overthink this. But they're over the cap and they have a defenseman to resign and etc. etc. But how do they get under the cap? Dude, David Clarkson got traded. Milan Lucic got traded. For James Neal, straight up. Players who are never gonna ever play again have been traded multiple times. Look at the ridiculous nonsense that Vegas just pulled with Vancouver. Signing Alice Petrangelo, getting rid of Nate Schmidt so they could do it. How are they gonna get under the cap? I don't know, but there's a way, and it's gonna be a lot easier than any of those deals I just told you. We're not talking about trading Nate Schmidt for a third, we're talking about, oh, okay, okay, I need to make a little move here and maybe a little move here. Like, don't lose sight of the fact that this happened on October 20th after seven because Kyle Dubas loves that. Seriously, this guy sits down at the dinner table and with his mouth still full, he's like, all right, let's put pen to paper. We have lives, Kyle, is what I'm saying. It's October 20th, Gary Bettman and various NHL folks have said that they hope to have the NHL season started by January 1st. Chris Johnston of Sportsnet recently said on the Steve Dangle podcast, it's a great podcast, hope you heard of it, that he thinks a February 1st start date could become possible. The Leafs still have like two months to get this figured out, to re-sign Travis Dermott or to trade him, to extend a player who's currently under contract or trade them or don't, just leave them, they're on your team, or to trade a guy or acquire a guy or do both at the same time. The Leafs are over the cap by a smidge. Vegas was over the cap by like half of the Sens payroll. It's not the same. To get a little bit more specific, forever shout out to Cap Friendly Dude, Toronto Maple Leafs update. Projected at $175,200 above the salary cap after signing McKayev to a two-year contract at 1.645 AAV. The roster's at 22, 13 forwards, 7D, two goalies, and the only two remaining RFAs. I said it was only Dermot. That's not true. Joey Anderson, who the Leafs just got for Andreas Janssen, they need to re-sign him too. Getting back to Ilya McKayev. This answers a question that I've had for a while that's been bothering me. Because, listen, uh, Matthews and Marner and Nylander and Tavares, having those four on your team is super fun. But to have those guys on your team at the amount of money they are cumulatively making, you have to have some really cheap options. And the Leafs have done a very good job of we're gonna get this guy from over here and we're gonna get this guy from the bargain bin and then they leave because they did well and then they go somewhere else to make more money. Like people were talking about, oh, the Leafs might have to get rid of Ilya Mikheyev and I, that bothered me because now I'm like, now they have to go out and get the next Ilya Mikheyev. Now they don't have to because for the next two years, the Toronto Maple Leafs have Ilya Mikheyev. So Leafs Nation, for the next two seasons, Soup's on. Eat up. Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Let me know what you think. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. Ilya Mikheyev.